Now, the iMac has been the gold standard of desktops for many years, but we're going to raise the bar once again. So these new displays are now going to be 500 nits. That's 43% brighter than the previous generation. And for the first time, we're going to support 10-bit dithering, which means these displays can reproduce up to a billion colors. In addition, these iMacs are getting a boost when it comes to memory capacity. So the 21.5-inch systems can now be configured with up to 32 gigs of memory, and the 27-inch can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of memory. In addition, our SSD options are going to be up to 50% faster and now available up to 2 terabytes, because we're giving them two USB-C connectors which support Thunderbolt 3. And the performance that we're getting out of this is pretty amazing, because this system is up to 80% faster in graphics than the previous generation. And the big news here is that we're going to be moving to discrete graphics and making it standard on all 4K iMacs. And again, this move to discrete graphics yields a pretty spectacular performance increase, because this new system is up to three times faster than the previous generations of graphics. Now lastly, we have our 27-inch iMac. And this is our most popular desktop for our pro customers. So it's going to have these Radeon Pro 500 series GPUs with up to 8 gigabytes of VRAM. And again, we get a great performance uplift. In fact, this 27-inch iMac can now deliver up to 5.5 teraflops of graphics compute, which makes it a great platform for VR content creation. Now, Lauren's backstage so we can show you the environment around her. And now, we're going to show you from my perspective. All right. Nice. All right, actually, let's stop it right there. That was a close one. For the first time ever, we're going to have a 4K iMac that starts at just $12.99. But the updates don't stop with just the iMac, because we're refreshing our notebooks today as well. We're bringing faster SSDs to our MacBook and faster standard graphics to the 15-inch MacBook Pro. So that is the new iMac Pro. Now, the first thing you'll notice is it features the same great design as our 27-inch iMac, but it's in this seriously badass space gray finish. This will be the most powerful Mac we've ever made. And they came up with this really efficient dual centrifugal fan solution, which generates significantly more airflow than a traditional iMac. In fact, the iMac Pro has a greater than 80% increase in cooling capacity. So that means we can deliver unbelievable performance while still maintaining the quiet operation you'd expect from an iMac. So the iMac Pro is going to ship with an 8-core Xeon processor. But it's also going to ship with a 10-core Xeon processor. Let's get really nutty. So we're going to offer it with up to 18 cores. So the iMac Pro, as you can see, is going to be a monster when it comes to graphics. But we didn't want to stop there either. So we're going to let you configure it with up to 128 gigabytes of ECC memory. That's twice what you can do in a standard 27-inch iMac. Up to 4 terabytes of 3 gigabyte per second SSD. Well, this is the starting configuration of the iMac Pro, and we're going to price it at just $49.99. Well, today, we're going to introduce an all-new iPad Pro. It's going to take everything you love about the 9.7-inch and give you a whole lot more to love. This is the new iPad Pro. It's the first iPad Pro with a larger 10.5-inch retina display. They're packed with incredible features like True Tone for automatic white balance, P3 wide color gamut for the best color, ultra low reflectivity, the best in the industry, and they're 50% brighter with 600 nits. But our biggest breakthrough is a feature we call ProMotion. Now typically, up until today, mobile displays have refreshed at 60 hertz, means they update their content 60 times every second. Well, on the new iPad Pro, we've doubled that maximum refresh rate to an incredible 120 hertz. Now, the higher refresh rate also means that it works even better with the Apple Pencil. We already have the industry-leading performance for drawing and writing with the Apple Pencil, but with ProMotion, it gets even better. These are the fastest we've ever created. Inside them, they're powered by the A10X Fusion chip. The A10X has a six-core CPU, three high-performance cores, three high-efficiency cores, all automatically managed by the Apple Performance Controller. 
It also has a 12-core GPU. This is a powerhouse. And it delivers 30% faster CPU performance over our already industry-leading A9X and 40% faster graphics performance. The iPad Pro supports USB 3, which means that you're going to get faster transfers with your USB and SD camera adapters. And this also, we also support fast charging, which means any of our USB-C charge adapters will now allow you to charge at half the time. We're also going to have configurations in 256 and 512 gigabytes, half a terabyte of storage in an iPad. So watchOS is moving forward really quickly, and I'm very excited to introduce watchOS 4 today. Let's start with watch faces. And we've created a new watch face, which is powered by Siri intelligence. This is the new Siri watch face. Now, it automatically displays the information that's most relevant to you. And you can also access Siri just by tapping on the new complication on the top left. And it automatically displays this information with the same type of intelligence we've applied on iOS. And if I rotate the crown, I can see more information from Siri. And throughout the day, whenever you raise your wrist, the face will dynamically update with information for you. Now, Mickey and Minnie have been a big hit on Apple Watch, and more characters have been working to find their way in. And I'm really excited to welcome Woody, and Jesse and Buzz. Now we've also enhanced the workout app to be even easier to use and more powerful. Starting with the new UI, where quick starts right up front, you can just tap and go, it's much easier. And we're now enhancing the pool swim workout with auto sets. So just by taking a rest at the edge of the pool, we'll automatically mark each set of swimming that you're doing. We've also created some custom motion and heart rate algorithms for a new workout type called high intensity interval training. Now, if you like to do more than one workout in a row, it's now super easy to just swipe over during a current workout and then add another one by pressing the plus button. We're enabling, for the first time, two-way data exchange in real time with gym equipment. So you'll be able to simply tap your Apple Watch on an NFC reader on the gym equipment. Your watch will automatically launch the workout app and you can connect. And then your heart rate is read by the watch and sent to the equipment. And data like incline and speed is sent from the equipment to your watch. Well, let's talk about Mac OS my privilege to announce for you today, Mac OS Hi Sierra. <laughs> now, don't worry about it because we have autoplay blocking in Safari. Now, Safari is also key in respecting your privacy because Safari has intelligent tracking prevention. Next, I wanna talk about some refinements to mail and it starts with search. So in addition to providing searches based on recency, search in mail is now using Spotlight to identify your top hit. So the message you're looking for is almost always right there at the top. And mail is more efficient than ever. It actually uses 35% less disk space for storing your mail. Photos has some great new organization and editing tools. There's a persistent sidebar and a new view that has all your imports in chronological order. And in any view up here in the upper right, you can filter by your keywords, by uh, your favorites, by just media types like video. So it's really easy to get to just what you're looking for. Now with this graphics power, we're really doubling down on our focus on pro content creation. And that's increasingly about VR content creation. And so we're bringing metal for VR to High Sierra. We're optimizing our pro apps like Final Cut for doing things like editing spherical video right inside the VR environment. We're also working with Valve. They're bringing the Steam VR SDK to the Mac. And we've worked with Unity and Unreal to bring their engines for VR to the Mac. We are taking iOS to the next level. This is the largest iOS release for iPad we've ever done. Now, it starts with the dock. On the right, there's a predictive area, figures out what you're gonna use next, including your continuity apps. And now you can summon the dock from anywhere, right from the bottom of the screen, and use it for switching apps just like that. And what's incredible is how it's used for multitasking. So now if you're in an app and you swipe up, well, you can pull an app out just like that into slide over. But what's really cool is the new app switcher because it preserves all of your spaces with your app pairings. It's really great. Now the iPad, of course, is the ultimate multi-handed, multi-touch device. And so we're so excited to bring drag and drop to iPad. 
You can drag images, you can drag text, you can drag URLs, you can multi-select and multi-hand drag. It's a drag fest. Now, we have a new app to introduce to you today, and it's called Files. <laughs> files brings together all your files on your iPad. It supports everything you'd expect, nested folders, spring loading, list view, favorites, search, tags, and it has this beautiful recents view that pulls it all together across all of your sources because it supports not only iCloud, it also supports third-party storage providers like Box, Dropbox, OneDrive, and Google Drive. I'm just gonna swipe for up from the bottom and keep swiping. It goes back like that. Let's do that again, that is so great. It's that easy. Let's try some drag and drop. So I'm gonna drag a URL from the top of Safari here right into this mail message. Drag it and drop it. Now I can drag it. Yep. Let's drag an image. Yep, just like that. And I can even swipe up with my other hand into multitasking. Move over to mail and drop. Now iOS 11 is available to all of you developers today. And if you sign up at beta.apple.com, you can get a beta at the end of the month. And we're making it available as a free upgrade to everyone in the fall supports all of these devices. We've got one last thing to talk to you about, and I'd like to invite Phil up to tell you all about it. Phil. Now we're working on this speaker for later this year, but we want to give you, 6,000 of our closest friends, a sneak peek at it this morning. It is absolutely beautiful, and we call it HomePod. Yes. So let's talk about these features. First, rock the house. The HomePod is just under seven inches tall. Along the bottom is a seven array beamform tweeter pack that's packed with seven tweeters, each with their own individual driver. They have precision acoustic horns that drive the audio from within and then out along the bottom with tremendous directional control. It has a really big woofer, a four inch woofer, upward facing with a large motor to move a lot of air. It has automatic bass equalization and dynamic software modeling so that as we turn the volume up, it's free from distortion. Next, talk about this spatial awareness. What does that mean? Well, you plug in your HomePod to AC and it gets its music wirelessly. And it's compact enough that you can put it most anywhere in your house. You can put it on a table, on a shelf, against the wall, in a corner, and it intelligently and automatically detects the space it's within. Next, a musicologist, this intelligent helper to help us discover the music we love. HomePod has an incredible speaker system that works together with our Apple Music subscription. From the beginning, it's designed to work with that. It knows the playlist you've set up, it knows the artists you love, and all of them stream directly to your HomePod. It works with an array of six microphones around the middle, so as you talk to it, and you say those magic words, hey Siri, you see a waveform light up on top, and now it can respond to your commands and help serve up the music you want to hear. These are free form. Siri doesn't need a specific list of commands. It can interpret what you're saying and help you discover the music you love. And even better, you don't have to just sit next to the HomePod to talk to it. You can be across the room and speak to the HomePod even while loud music is playing and the speaker array and the microphones can, can pick it up and hear what you're saying. We said the domain of music is something Siri knows really well in HomePod. There are other domains as well. We've worked hard to pick the first ones that we think matter most in a product like HomePod. So of course, you can play your podcasts, but it can also do things like give you news, give you weather, traffic, sports. You can ask it to set a reminder, set a timer, text someone with messages. And if you have HomeKit devices set up in your home, you can speak to your HomePod and control your HomeKit devices. And if you've set up scenes in HomeKit, you can control those as well. You can say, I'm home, it's movie time. I'm leaving now, and the whole scene can automatically happen just by talking to your HomePod. So we're really excited to tell you that HomePod is going to be priced for $349. It comes in white and space gray, 
It'll start shipping this December, first in the US, the UK, and Australia, and then next year we'll start bringing it around the world. So that's HomePod. Back to you, Tim. Woo!